My name is Hodan. Uh, my name is Simone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you, Wayne, for inviting us to uh, speak. And thank you all for sharing your, uh, your knowledge and your experiences and reflections with us. I think we, we really appreciated it because uh, we're in a project um, connected to this, well, to well, basically doing an intervention within the Trop Museum, which is part of the big national museum for world cultures that this museum, the Folkkunde Museum, also belongs to. And uh, we're here to share our sort of experience of what that intervention looked like, what that was, what the process was like, but also our sort of dilemmas and challenges and um, the politics of doing that. Um, we are, um, our colleague Tilte Balk isn't here today, but we're, the three of us are activists and organizers and um, uh, black women, women of color, um, with different colonial histories that have shaped our, our families' histories, and, and we've all grown up in the Netherlands. Um, in our activism and organizing, we critique and challenge um, what Bell Hooks calls the white supremacist, capitalist, imperialist, ableist, hetero patriarchy. Um, she, uh, I think some other people added the, the hetero, of the part of the hetero patriarchy and, and ableist um, part, but it, we think those are valuable um, additions. Um, so um, those sort of connected oppressions in Dutch mainstream media, academia, uh, border politics, and also within activist spaces that we're part of. Um, and uh, we create our own, our own media, our own spaces to have conversations uh, that are about understanding how these oppressions work uh, in our lives, both on an interpersonal uh, level and an institutional level. And I say all of this because this is our background. We are not academics. We do not have a background in sort of um, working in museums, et cetera. Um, but um, uh, we work from an embodied experience of being confronted with the everyday effects of colonial uh, thinking in its many forms. And uh, our own experience as visitors to the Tropen Museum um, before getting involved in this project uh, showed us that the, that museum is absolutely essential in reproducing that colonial thinking. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with the Tropen Museum, perhaps it has uh, exhibitions on Southeast Asia, Oceania, Oceania uh, Western Asia, North Africa, Africa, Weird sort of, this is from the website, so all the distinctions that I'm making are from the website. Um, Africa, Latin America, and then music, dance, and theater. So it's an ethnographic museum, it's a colonial museum, um, it's a problematic museum. So um, whereas we usually uh, sort of happily stand on the outside of institutions such as these, uh, such as this museum, critiquing and demanding change, we found ourselves being invited <laughs> to, to do that more or less from the inside of the museum when we were invited by Laura van Broekhoven and, and Wayne uh, to share our critique and to create an intervention to disrupt the colonial violence that is being perpetrated within the museum. Um, so this intervention, um, what, is, what did it look like? The shape the intervention took is a series of conversations with different, uh, first of all, really kind of like honest conversations that we had with Wayne and, and Laura, um, which are uh, which were really important to feel like these are people that are basically part of management that are sort of professionally but personally and politically committed to um, ending the viol institutional violence that is sort of uh, so obvious, you know, within the Trop Museum. It's happening so obviously. So um, that was um, a long process of conversations where they were like yeah, we, we can't do this alone from within, so we, we want to engage in conversation with you, and um, we, want to, uh, we, wa we want to ask you to create an intervention within the museum that we can also sort of leverage to um, feed, uh, sort of mobilize, disrupt, whatever is happening already within the museum as a whole to create change. So we, that was really important to us, I think. We didn't came, come in being like, you need to change, and we were sort of paid to do like a little project, but they were already engaged in a, in a huge sort of project that they were committed uh, you know, to, and um, we were a part of that. Um, so we, we were game. We were like, 
uh, interested, I think. <laughs> we were suspicious, but we liked the people. But I'm gonna be honest, Wayne. <laughs> we, were, we were sort of like, of course, when you're invited by an institution like that, you're sort of, I think we all felt like, you know, we're committed to, to do something, and if we have the opportunity to do it somehow in a different way than we're used to um, from the inside without being sort of, um, without compromising ourselves, then we can try that. So we did, and we were really, I was really sort of, I think, really happy to work together uh, with with Wayne and Laura and, and, and the curators. Um, so what, what what was this intervention? What did it look like? Uh, it was a series of conversations uh, at first with us, and then we invited a, a group of uh, critical people, friends and friends of friends, mostly people of color, mostly between the ages of 20 <coughs> and 35, and we asked them to come to the museum and tell us what they honestly thought. Uh, many of them uh, were of African descent. Um, and um, uh, yeah, people of different genders, uh, sexualities. We asked them how walking through the museum made them feel, uh, what stood out most of them, uh, what they hoped to gain from the visit, what kind of expectations they had, um, and how they think the museum needs to change to stop um, reproducing violence. I think it's important to know that many of the people that were part of the project ended up um, having quite a traumatic experience just walking through the museum. Um, Many of them have, are connected to the histories and the, the cultures and the peoples that are represented in the museum. Maybe they're of Indonesian accent, uh, uh, des, the descent or Surinamese or you know, Ethiopian. Or, and, um, and there were such um, misrepresentations and um, just a lot of different ways in which um, the truth wasn't being told. And it went even beyond that, but I'll go into that later, um, that people felt really kind of uh, sometimes very horrible after you know going into the museum for an hour and then coming back and then and then us being there and asking them how what did you think and they would be like I need a moment you know so um, so we had honest conversations and 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 Wayne and Laura and Annette were were there for for some of those conversations uh, to listen and to give a little bit of context because people had questions like what the fuck is Sorry. What's going on here? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and um, and they could, you know, they could give a little, a little bit of context. You know, uh, even though you know, some most of them were not involved in, you know, setting up the, the museum as it is now. Um, they could provide a little bit of background into, you know, the decision-making processes that go behind what's going on. Um, so. I'm talking really fast because I feel it's necessary. I hope you can, I'm making, I'm still making sense. Oh, we're doing on time. Excellent, I think. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay, so and then um, another, a, a big part of the intervention was also to basically write texts uh, um, that would be installed into, in the museum as, as sort of temporary installations that respond to the text uh, that are in, in the museum, respond to the exhibition. So um, as a visual sort of disruption and as also, you know, um, a way to um, correct and challenge and critique um, the narratives that are represented within the museum. So we asked also a group of the, the people that participated in the conversations to write these texts with us um, to talk back to the exhibitions. Um, and then another part of the intervention is to have sort of formal and informal conversations with the staff to explain our position and our analysis, how and why the museum is reproducing racist uh, hierarchies um, and colonial violence. So um, the group's visits and, and conversations led to the following conclusions uh, about the language and exhibitions in the in the Trop Museum. Um, so um, we feel they are the reproducing colonial hate racist um, hierarchies, uh, presenting white Westerners as, you know, continuously structurally as the civilized ones, the active agent, the, um, the, no, the, the one bringing civilization to a passive, primitive, um, uncivilized, um, um, non-Western, um, peoples, um, it's, uh, there is structurally, there is an erasure of the agency and perspectives of non-Western colonized peoples, um, which is 
uh, in stark contrast to the way that uh, colonial sort of individuals are almost you know, sort of glorified glorified. We don't really know, get to know who the people behind the, the objects are, um, but we do sort of get to know intimately sometimes the histories of individuals, white uh, Dutch uh, colonials, colonialists who uh, have been part of the colonial pro Dutch colonial project. Um, so there is on the one hand this erasure of the agency and perspectives of non-Western colonized peoples, and on the other hand there is very clearly uh, in in the way in the way the texts are written that accompany the the, the exhibition, um, um, the writers of the text are speaking from and for a white gaze, which privileges the perspectives and stories of uh, white colonizers. Um, it's speaking to uh, to a, a white Dutch sort of assumption is the person who is visiting the museum is a white Dutch person, um, and then uh, there's also. Thanks. There's also an erasure of colonial violence and minima, uh, profits and uh, the gains of, of the colonial project. Uh, Dutch colonial is, uh, project is minimized. And lastly, uh, but like hugely, <laughs> um, colonialism is glorified as a, as a, a civilizing project. Um, progress, trade, discovery, science are emphasized. And some examples are, um, I don't know if, if you can read this. Um, so this is about the about Suriname, one of the um, um, uh, colonies of used to be one of the col uh, Dutch colonies, and the way that um, you you can see it you can see it most in the Dutch cut text, and that's also an interesting difference that the people uh, who participated in the project saw that there's always there seems to be like structurally a difference in the way that the Dutch text is written and the English text is written, where the English one is a little bit more politically correct, usually, uh, but the Dutch is quite sort of yeah, maybe a little bit more honest. Um, <laughs> so here you see, for example, that you know the meager profits from these estates went directly to the Netherlands in the first par in the first uh, part of the text. Um, also in the in the Dutch, uh, also in the English, you see you know Sur Suriname remained a colony dependent on the Netherlands. It, it's a complete reversal of the situation. Um, yeah, it's like, I don't know, we gloss over also the agency of people fighting for their own liberation when we say, you know, after a period of self-governance, independence was declared. Um, there isn't really a lot of, even though colonial history is a big part of what's, you know, what's in the museum, there's hardly any mention of uh, struggles for liberation. And independence, uh, decolonization is not really too much of a, um, of a theme. Um, so this is only one example. Here we have another example of what I mean with um, sort of uh, focusing on the perspectives and the stories and experiences of, of white colonialists. Here you see the, the person that you see is sort of like a sort of like a Madame Tussaud type of um, statue and you have uh, several of these, maybe six or so. These are all white people. One of them is not, I think. Um, this is in the Dutch East Indies part of the exhibition. And um, you see a little bit, there's a little sort of like plaque and it says what the person was, what the person was doing, obviously an important sort of rich person within. And it's kind of disturbing because you, you don't see this. There is no, no such thing, this in, in, you know, like a person from the Dutch East Indies who is not white isn't represented in the same ways. They're sort of like faceless, nameless masses of people. And then here you see there's a plaque um, commemorating this person, George Tillman, who, um, who sort of created uh, uh, a lot of the, the collection in the Tulp Museum is from his personal collection. And we don't really get that story. Um, I'll, I'll skip that one. Get that story um, in the same way from the people who created all the objects that are in the museum. Thank you. Oh, that was really good. Okay, I have two more minutes. I'm going to talk really, really fast. Because I think what's important to know about the focus groups that we had um, was who was in the groups. Because as people mentioned before, like we're having a conversation, we're having a conversation. In the Netherlands, you don't really have a conversation about colonialism. Because if you have it with the wrong people or with a specific kind of group, you get stuck on this very apologetic nature. So we were very adamant about getting people in the room 
that we can left the conversation at a specific point. Um, instead of having to justify that, saying that you are not a bad person, not all white people, not all colonizers, we want to have a conversation that really dived into the conversation that we needed to be having. Um, I have two more minutes, such pressure. So the recommendations we uh, summarized from these conversations are as followed. To reevaluate the current gaze, position, and authority of ethnographic museums in their current form. Uh, the current form being that of an immovable mothership of colonial, colonialism. Because I don't think the, the, the perspective really changes. So you have, um, you have a project or you have a special, but what are the structural changes of a museum? How can you make this more part of the collective identity and the collective memory of the Netherlands? Second point is decentering whiteness and the Eurocentric gaze, which my dear colleague also discussed, and with regards to who's looking at these, um, who's looking at these plaques, at these displays, who was it built for, who, who was it written for, who wants to not be, and I think somebody mentioned this before, who wants to not feel this discomfort when getting to know the other person. Third point is creating a space to learn and unlearn, emphasis on the unlearning, uh, active, embodied, reflexive empathy. I think that speaks for itself. Uh, last one is taking ethnographic museums from the academic spheres to the social justice sphere, which is exactly why we created the hashtag to make it much more accessible for people. And also I think to get into that space of, like we see in South Africa, where the roads must fall and the fees must fall. This is for us, for young people, um, who have the privilege of being online to have that conversation and not wait for the permission to have that conversation. This is us saying, this is what is interesting to us, this is what is necessary for us. And whether or not you invite us into the space with everybody at the board meeting, these are the conversations we're going to be having. So that was, wait, am I doing my time? Yeah. This is it? Perfect. In two minutes. <laughs> you can book me for all your parties. <laughs> I think these are the questions we might be able to address when we're on the panel. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>